What is good, family? What is good? Welcome back to the channel. Make sure to hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel. Definitely come by and throw those A's in the chat right now so that I know that you are aware of my voice coming in through your ears. What is up, Yuka Frita, Katie, Cat? What a long weekend it was. Are you ready for Monday? Because, yes, I am absolutely ready for Monday, too. My goodness, we have made it back. Happy Easter to everybody. Uh, if you know, sorry if I offend anybody with that, right? I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying the piece, right? It's all good, it's all good. <laughs> but what is up, team? Good to see everybody here. I've already released actually two videos, and uh, two of those videos are actually uh, uh, just for crypto, right? I ended up releasing a bit of what was it called uh solana and uh some cardano right I, i've noticed that they do have a heavy search on youtube so that is the reason why i released that senor pennington and smokescreen what's up guys good to see you here thank you for coming on by cyber sultan what's up my bro good to see you jd nettles always good to see you here thank you so much for stopping on by team so yeah you know what we have some interesting interesting information coming on uh coming in because of the quarterly close the monthly close and uh, the weekly bi-weekly all that whole thing man it was a bunch of closures over this uh this friday and um as i was looking at the as i was looking at the charts i'm like man you know some of those candles are looking super scary but then when you're looking at them on the on the macro not so bad let me give you a quick example, right? Let's go ahead and switch over to this to uh, to the charts over here, and I'm going to show you something. There we go. So, uh, Senor Pennington, what's up, man? You're looking at CELH uh, for further downside, possible ten points after a short upside. Oh, dude, Candace Morrison, happy Easter to you, and uh, my bro. You know what? Let's go ahead and add it into the uh, into the cycle here and see what's up, right? So, C. C E uh, I'm sorry, what was it again? Uh C E L H. All right. Uh let's go to all here. Nice. All right. Yeah, let's let's uh let's give this a quick look, man. Thank you so much for sharing this with the team. We'll see what's up, man, for sure. Okay, so yeah, let, let's go ahead and speak about the spy real quick. Because this is what I mean. Check, check this out. <laughs> so this is your this is your quarterly close right huge candle and take a look at the wick on top right almost no wick at all that usually means that uh uh it's given back very little of which it what is gained right so it's not giving back much at all so it's looking really good and uh if i were to kind of look at this in the quarterly time frame then this kind of looks like a bull flag right and if it is a bull flag then we know that those have a I guess we do have a, a little bit of a price objective to look at right here, right? So, and that would be around the areas of around 660, uh, 670. So now please remember that this is a macro target and uh, the SPY only has around a four to $5 average true range on a daily basis, right? So not saying that it's gonna be there tomorrow or anything like that. I'm just saying that if it were to kind of practice this uh, bull flag here, then we could potentially see something on top just like that. Not to mention here that we had a pretty nice bullish engulfing here with a validation candle. So that usually presents a continuation to the upside, right? So let's uh, now look at this, though. Let's pull this back to the daily time frame and tell me this doesn't look absolutely horrendous, right? So, yeah, let's go ahead and zoom in, zoom in. And look at what that daily candle looks like. Man, oh man. Talk about a crucifix right here, man. Looking at <laughs> that thing is literally pointing down for everyone, right? So that's, uh, again, this is just a daily time frame. It could be indicating here a short-term pullback before we can uh, continue on to the upside, right? This is, used, this, this is, I mean, a prime example here of a shooting star candle. And uh, seeing that we do have matching bear volume here, actually above the prior bar, above the prior bar volume, right? So this is around what 83 million on that prior bar, and now this is 96 million on that red bar, right? So this is certainly suggesting a potential pullback incoming. Uh, I would say as soon as tomorrow, right? So what I do like is that we've penetrated the highs, right? So we penetrated into new all-time highs, 524.61. So to determine what that downside could be, uh, we can just look at a couple uh, 
a few stats here, right? Let's keep in mind that, that our average true range here on a daily is four dollars fourteen cents. What is our twelve hour close? Five twenty two ninety five. We have a five twenty three oh seven close on the daily. Okay, so pulling back here, it looks like we can drop. Uh, let's see to about. Let's just say we were to open at five twenty three. You know what? Let me use the 24 hour chart for this and we can uh, determine that. Okay, there we go. So from the present, yeah, from the present price right here at this uh, 522.95, if we were to open around there tomorrow, then our pullback could be seen to the current ATR low of around 518.31. So 518.31, let's see where that is, right? So that, that could actually put us, wow, that puts us right I mean, yeah, I, I guess uh, nine cents shy, <laughs> damn, uh, of of uh, this bottom side here, right? So I, it's still okay to tell you the honest truth here. It's still fine. So let me look at that, maybe on a weekly basis here, and then pull this back to around that five eighteen low. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that would actually just be to test the the prior week's bottom side right down here. Right, so that that's still okay. That could serve, honestly, that could serve as a double bottom too, uh, before a continuation to the upside. So I'm not, again, team. I'm not saying that we're gonna go all the way down there because the truth of the truth of the matter is that this uh, market kind of still belongs to the bulls, and while we are printing freaking quarterly candles like this, you know, that's uh, <laughs> you know, the proof is in the pudding here, right? That doesn't. Uh, that doesn't speak bears at all, really. So we have to keep that. We have to bear that in mind and uh, ma make sure that if you are playing the downside here, maybe don't abuse that, right? Maybe don't abuse the, the fact that you can get some quick scalps to the downside before you can continue on to the upside. What I will say is that in on that way down, you have a critical, a critical resist. I'm sorry, support here. I'm saying resistance because if you're playing short, this would be your resistance down here. Right, so let's, let's kind of... Uh, plot that here on the chart so that you know one of the areas that can present some dangers for the bears right about here okay so 52097 to 52062 this could be a zone where you can get trapped if you are playing the downside okay so heads up on that Jay Pong what is up my bro you got frita my dude uh it's at 525 right now nice Nice. So the daily traders are still looking at this, though, right? So we're gonna we're gonna if that is uh if we do open up uh, at around five twenty five, man, that would be a huge gap up. Very likely, we're gonna pull right right on back to the prior day's close, and uh, and that's gonna be the area where we're gonna determine whether it's gonna be a a gap fill reversal or it's gonna be a potential a gap and go situation where we pull on back, get the. Uh, Get that get that gap closed and then uh continue on to the upside right so if it is 525 you're looking at a 521 retracement 520 and uh that could be in line here with the daily atr at the present moment right that could be the 51906 but of course we have that we have that extra extra dollar 93 cents above the 52307 so that would uh, yeah around 520 would be that pullback so just in case right just in case we have the daily traders looking at this a candle alongside the buy daily traders and the three day traders right with this uh, <laughs> with these shooting stars everywhere just know that it is landing as a probability five day time frame as well no notice that those are those are not closed time frames though right so these are still uh these are still counting down the times however in a in a bearish stance right so we just want to make sure that we can practice some uh discretion here before we can continue uh other than that, thank you. Thank you for letting me know that it is uh, currently at the, uh, <laughs> bear that in mind, <laughs> no pun intended, <laughs> right? Nice. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just keep that in mind, right? So if it does, uh, open up around 525, well, usually these things tend to pull back around the areas where they were, uh, at the, at the new market opens, right? So Euro open, uh, could be around 4 a.m., right? So I would say, I would say, yeah, I, I would say right about 5 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. Pacific time. That would be around the time where we're going to be uh, reverting here back to this 523 area or back to the top side of the 524.61, depending on how high it went in the 24-hour uh, chart. 
So if it does pull back here, if it does pull back to that 524.61 by maybe around 1 a.m. Pacific to 2 a.m. Pacific, it definitely expect here a continuation into that potential 523 or even that 524.11 by uh, Euro Open or by early by the pre-market on the U.S. time, which would be 6 a.m. Pacific time, right? And that would be 9 a.m. Uh, Eastern. So, yeah, just wait for that. So, if let's just say that it, we did open up near here, right? So, yeah, we, we, we have a gap here to kind of hold everything back. The weekly bottom is something that the uh, bears are probably going to bank on here, right? Getting this extended move down to 518.40. So, got to keep that in mind, too. Now, is there? Oh, right. And there is a fair value there, right? So, we have to make sure to keep this in mind too okay this gap here what you're looking at is the body and the wicks okay so look at this wick here presenting a gap between this wick and this wick using that body in between okay so that's uh that's how you can uh, notice a price imbalance right usually uh uh that's used in a in a immediate short-term time frames somewhere around around the line around the lines of a one minute two minute three minute uh type of strategy right it was coined by ict the inner circle trader but i've noticed here that the fair value gaps or the imbalances in price do have some validity into other time frames and also into traditional equities because this was introduced in forex trading so uh so yeah yeah just uh, know that that i'm being as transparent as I, as I can be with you right so that you know what strategies i'm pulling out of where but like, i'm usually pulling out a, a pulling out strategies from everywhere <laughs> so uh, jay pong saying happy easter arca i'm off to bed check out kulr if you get a chance mentioned it uh like at 20 cents next day it skyrocketed dude yeah we actually we looked at kulr for a few days right i forgot who mentioned it was it you uh or who was it it wasn't you pennington right ian do you remember who mentioned that that ticker kulr we were looking at it for a few days KULR, and then we noticed somebody said that it, uh, one of the Archibulls members said that it was trading very much like the uh, GNS asset. Was that the one? I'm forgetting if that was actually the one, right? But yeah, yeah, Jay Pong, we've been looking at that ticker for a, for a few days now, my buddy. But dude, thank you. And I, and I think maybe you were the one that brought it up to the, to the team about a week or two ago, no? I thought it was Pennington. I thought it was Senor Pennington. No, it was. He's saying it's not, it's not him. What's up, Buzzman? Happy Easter to you, my bro. It might, it may, it may have been Jay Pong around uh, two weeks ago or a week ago. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, we definitely kept it in mind and we looked at it. Uh, it was compared to GNS and it was moving up, up, and it freaking ran and ran and ran. Good, good call out to whoever that was. If it was you, Jay, hats off to you, my brother. But uh, let's see. Uh. <laughs> well pennington gets the credit let's go let's see hold on team okay all right so yeah just speaking on this it, the reason why i'm um, speaking just a little bit of a pullback here is because of that ridiculous uh ominous looking candle here on the daily time frame right huge uh huge shooting star right there so um but, oh, man, Ian, I hear you on that one, dude. But to be honest, I don't think that that's going to be the case. I do think here that we have a, a limited, limited pullback. It's funny because this fair value gap is landing at the 521, which is another area that we were suggesting here, too. Right. So uh, I don't think we're get, I don't think we'll get a capitulation on the broader markets, to be very honest, my bro. I think that we. uh uh, I think I think that we're set to create newer highs, right? So, I mean, first, right, the initial part of the week here, maybe Monday, Tuesday, we could be observing some sideways trading, maybe, maybe some downside price action, find a floor again, and then continue on to the upside, right? I think one of the lower targets here, sure, it could be around the 517 to 51840. Uh, even if we were to come down to man uh, dare i say even if we came down to 508 we would still be making a new higher low so that um there are several areas of critical critical supports as we move on uh into these uh higher time frames right like i mean even on the uh, sorry on the weekly time frame let's see yeah the weekly time frame has a critical support right down here at that 505 maybe 503 
Bora area. Oh, right. That's the that's the NVIDIA gap. That's the 503. Yeah, even if we were to come down to that 503 to 508, that's still okay. Uh, this the, the markets are not suggesting uh, any type of real pullback just yet. I do see this as a higher probability of continuation. Uh, and if that's the case, then we then we really have to watch out when we're playing against the the, the grain, right? We have to watch out when we're playing this uh, this downside, or else we're gonna get we're just gonna get uh, uh, trampled. All right, so let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and uh, continue the analysis here and see what's up. Uh, okay. Oh, sorry. I I didn't. Uh, sorry. Who's that? Doc, live mic, buddy. Uh, please mute it whenever you can, my brother. That was uh, Doc CVD sixty two, my bro. Please, uh, live mic, live mic. Guys, so yeah, let me let me just go ahead and take a look at this. Right, the chat is saying some things and I didn't uh, catch up. Let's see what you saying. What you saying? So it's been a few weeks now of uh, sideways trading. Yeah, yeah, man, I agree. We've been certainly just grinding up little by little. Uh, let's see. Uh, Buzz, man, let's. Yeah, man, I'm sick of the sideways trading too, my bro. I'm definitely, definitely sick of it. We want to choose a direction here and stick to it, right? But, uh, yeah, just once again, you guys, just uh, watch out with the downside here. I do expect a, a, a very immediate short term, and I'm talking about immediate as in related to the monthly, right? So. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, potential pullback sideways trading by Wednesday, Thursday. Maybe we catch another upside here and start making new highs. But I don't I don't think we uh, see capitulation on the spy unless there are catalysts to really uh, to really look out for. You know, if if uh, we just get at in out of nowhere, Jerome uh, Powell hawkish remark or something in, in that manner. Yes. Right. But as long as we can see this type of price action with this volume inclining, that's that's uh, that's bull strength. And we, and that's likely a continuation to the upside. All right. So uh, let's take a look at the IWM for small caps. Right. Because this uh, we definitely entered a phase of strength that we identified here using, I believe, the four hour time frame. And uh, we absolutely reached the targets that we were looking for and beyond, right? So these are th this is the range that we were looking for on Thursday and Friday. We absolutely reached it, right? This was a two twelve thirty six to the two ten forty four. Came in right at the right at the brink of that. And there appears to be uh, YouTube. Let me know if I'm still connected to you. I just got a little bit of a disconnect. There we go, YouTube. Let me know if I'm still connected to you. I just got a little bit of a notice here that I got disconnected temporarily. So throw those A's in the chat, YouTube, if you can hear my voice uh, still, right? And if you still see the stream going. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. YouTube, you are not alive. Let me know that you are there. Check it, check it, check it, check, check, check. Check, check it, check it, check, check. All right. Nice. Thanks, Candace. Yeah, I thought I, uh, I thought I disappeared permanently there. <laughs> All right, good deal. I'm back. All right, team. So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and talk about this uh, this inflection point on small caps, right? This is going to be your iShares, Russell 2000 DTF, IWM ticker. Uh, keep keep, a, keep an eye at this uh, bottom side here, right? That's going to be right at that 209.90. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Keep an eye on this potential bottom here because we could see a bounce into this area. And if that's the case, there could be a recovery bounce. But I have to say that I have to say this. The importance of clearing this resistance is great. That would be the 21008. OK, so I'm going to go. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of uh, get rid of a couple of these uh, lines here. It's getting a little messy up in here. Right. So. Get rid of some of this. All this stuff already played out, so we got those targets dead on, looking good, right? So I'm gonna I'm gonna circle here, or I'm gonna highlight the zone that we are potentially gonna be in for a bit. Okay, we may consolidate within this area here in the immediate short term. Now, if that's the case, it may look like this, and if that is the case, then we have a head and shoulder situation, which could introduce a decline in small caps. Targets to be found could be as the ones we spoke of, right? 207.75 to 208.15. It is conditional. It is only if we fail this inflection. And I would say an hourly closure 
beneath this could do it for me uh, for a continuation to the downside here. Okay, so heads up on your IWM and small cap holdings as there could be some pressure to the downside here, right? Yeah, we're getting a bearish crossover on the RSI. Same situation here. A little bit of a nosedive on that hourly time frame Stoke. Uh, downtime, let's see. Yeah, we have a downtime here on, on Stochastic and uh, a little bit of resistance about to be faced on that RSI before a continuation to the downside. But yeah, immediate short term time frame, definitely bearish here. Gotta watch out, gotta watch out, gotta watch out. Okay, team, so that is gonna do it for your IWM ticker. Now, uh, you know what? I do believe that uh, Cryptic Trader shared with me. Hold on, let me go into the uh, community chat. Cryptic Trader shared with us a tweet that <laughs> that had to do with uh, with with Meta, right? So, and uh, I believe yeah, it was uh, through Elon Musk, right? So this is it uh, right here. So please take a look. As this says, Meta was also falsely claiming credit for sales that actually originated from X, right? So this is uh, this is actually a suit against Meta uh, for allegedly inflating ad viewership in seven in a seven billion dollar lawsuit. So guys, this is uh, this could be a catalyst for uh, Monday, as uh, as I do agree, right? So he did put this up. Uh, Cryptic Trader put it up on the on the uh, community chat of the Arca Bulls trading team. And I will say that this is in play. So heads up on Meta. And I will say that Meta does have signals already. It already has symptoms for a potential downside even before the catalyst was even shown. My goodness in heaven. Let's get this screen and stay over there, yeah? Here we go. <laughs> All right. So now what do I mean by that? Let's go ahead and pull up the Meta charts and just take a look at this. This is your monthly close. And take a look at that signal right up there. Right. So this was in play for i i gotta say the better part of two weeks right so whatever is happening here on the data or sorry the the uh, catalyst has a lot to do with the way it looks like right now we're talking about a monthly shooting star right here right that is literally begging to uh come down and as we've seen before meta has had times to where it uh to where it let's see how can how can i say it meta has had its uh, uh shining moments where it's uh where it's dragged the markets up with it and dragged the markets down with it now when it drags the markets down it needs the support of the other chips or the other mega caps in order for it to drag the markets down with it we have also noticed that meta the meta has the ability to trade all on its own just like tesla does right so my opinion here is that the markets may fuel the downside of meta in in uh, i'm sorry in the immediate short term for the first uh, maybe two days but then from there meta is going to be in kind of a free range so it may actually it may deviate from the broader markets for a bit as there aren't bearish catalysts too much around other tickers right now right in fact uh nvidia just had a massive conference uh introducing some uh very large scale cpus so or gpus so I, I have to say that I think Meta here, yeah, it may fall by itself. It may be a little bit of a grind too, but this uh, this is speaking short to me, okay? So heads up on this. We have a monthly shooting star here. Let's find out what the probabilities could be. So let's pull this thing to the daily time frame and see what's up, right? So we're already declining into a point of inflection. The inflection point here overall would be this zone right about here. Mark that down into your charts. That's going to be, uh, you know what, let's get rid of this. And uh, what I'm going to do here as well is actually just uh, get rid of all the drawings. We're going to just start this uh, month off clean, right, with a clean slate. So this zone right here, let's go ahead and mark that off. That would be your inflection point, 476.13. Let's make sure that we know what the average true range is for the, for the trading range for Meta. Right, daily time frame has an almost $13 average true range. So that means that uh, this, uh, you know, that this is well within this is well within its bounds, right? So we're, we're talking lower than that. So if it does, if it does uh, go into those lower targets, I would say uh, 480, right, just above this, which is this point right here. But if it does continue beyond 480, what I mean by way below is this gap 
at 469. So heads up with that. Be very careful here, right? Because I do see this gap potentially filling uh, sooner than later if this really does perform some downside. Okay, so immediate short-term time frame bounce. In, in other words, we could... Let me see the 12-hour close, first of all. 486, right? Okay, Susan. Hey, happy Easter to you. Thank you so much for coming on by. Very good to see you here. And uh, yeah, so let, let's continue, right? So what I'm basically saying is that price action may be able to do something along the lines of this, right? Immediate short-term time frame upside resistance from the zone of about 488 to maybe yeah 488 to about 490.36 rejection at that point we'll get the support bounce at 481.35 we get this resistance here at 485.20 then your decline starts this is going to be the first test of your inflection point likely not to fail it in that first shot right so you probably come back up to 479.58 to maybe this point here and resist from that area before then you could start to see a failure of that point right so th this is going to be it's going to be critical here what we're going to see here right because this is going to be very very uh dependent on how the sentiment takes the, the takes the uh, lawsuit right so but meta does have the potential to drop into those lower targets okay so remember how this thing is uh, potentially set to go right because usually it does kind of work in this way we tend to zigzag unless the unless it's really really bearish then yeah we could just capitulate here and then there could be just uh, dead cat bounces along the way but in this case since i'm not really seeing how the sentiment is we've had a long weekend right i don't know how this is uh behaving yet so it's hard to tell so those are the two probabilities zigzag immediate short term uh, short term time frame upside right rejection then we would get that uh, that uh, uh continuation to the downside in that behavior that is if if the remember that is if the sentiment doesn't really take it and uh just over exaggerates that that bear play and just capitulates this thing all the way down to 469 right past its uh atr so yeah just heads up here with meta right it, def it definitely is running on a catalyst that ca that a cryptic trader was kind enough to share with us in the uh, community of the archibulls trading team now i do have another one to share with you and uh that is based let me go ahead and pull up the link here and uh i'm gonna go ahead and expand the view just a little bit so that we all can see what this is looking right looking like right so a little bit more of a zoom here we go okay so now take a look at this this uh was in around 13 hours ago definitely within the weekend right boeing 727 loses control and crashes during landing in terrifying incident right so this is uh the image here of the 727 craft uh now there there is a very valid point that cryptic trader put up right this is a 50 year old uh craft uh my uh my argument against that is that at this point i almost feel like the sentiment isn't looking at this number first necessarily i feel like the sentiment is looking at boeing and crashes right so <laughs> i think that that's really what we're doing here and there could be a short uh, there, there could be some downside here to observe for ticker symbol ba so let's go ahead and pull and pop up the charts here and see what's being said right because there could be a, a pretty nice uh, opportunity for a downside there although i wish everybody's safe and i hope everybody is safe right let's just uh let's just see what the uh airline company has to say in the uh in the charts right so let's pull up the daily time frame here and see this against your 12 hour chart as well i mean it doesn't take a scientist here to see that this thing has been in a complete decline for the for the last few weeks right so huge huge downside play on this right so let's see what the close is so 192.99 at the daily 192.91 on the 12 hour right okay so post hours uh okay this is already very clear here that the bulls are growing exhausted right take a look at that we have complete decline in volume here ascending price that is your bearish divergence here right so that is literally just uh, running on fumes to that upside and there could be a resistance found very very soon if it were to move to the upside i don't know that it can move that far up 
since it does have some very, very, very relevant resistance levels from here. Speaking particularly this zone right here at 193.37. I mean, that's already so close. Right, so let's take a look at the stats here. What what's the uh, ATR on this? And let's pull it up on the 12 hour time, uh, 24 hour time frame, to determine the higher probabilities here. Right, so your current that that would be your new day. Right, so let's see your ATR top could be around 196. Okay, right, so that would put us around these resistance levels here, and uh, your bottom side could be 186. Okay. So if this is the 186 bottom, this, oh, this would be right around this support level. Oh, it's an inflection point. Wow. Okay, guys, this is, uh, yeah, this is going to present some serious dangers to the long holders here. There could be, there could be what you can, uh, let's just say it, it for, for lack of, uh, better terms there could be a long squeeze here right <laughs> so if this uh does resist at that 196 sure it may be able to get that right which is going to be uh your weekly top uh right around that 196 197 target get that resistance from that point there and this would essentially fall into a very critical point right this 186 is your inflection for the week that would uh failing that that would introduce some serious price action to the downside. So right, right about here, let's go ahead and draw that line there. That's going to be your line in the sand. Tom, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Tom, I've been very good, man. And it's very good to see you here again. I hope that I'm streaming early enough to, uh, <laughs> to have some of my East coasters say hi. Right. So I assume that you're in the East and the East coast. Uh, so, but it was very good to see you, my brother. Thank you for coming on by. Thank you for saying hello. <laughs> and, uh, we've been, we, I've been, I've been good, man. I've been good. Just doing the damn thing here, right? Trying to provide for the, for the Arca Bulls trading team. Very good to see you, but let's continue on the analysis here, right team? So yeah, quick failure here. We may not actually reach that 196 top. Please know that it, there's a, there is a gap there, right? There is a pretty nice gap at around 197.26. So I guess we can just, uh, mark off that gap as the zone. That we can get a critical resistance read from right right about there and uh we'll get a bounce from that area to fail right so if we start testing that 186.90 it's going to be hard for us to just penetrate it on the first try first of all because this would be the full extension move to the downside before we can actually but before we can actually uh break it we're going to bounce right so we're, it's going to bounce just a little bit right we'll we'll come up to a relevant resistance maybe somewhere here 190.30 uh, 189.90 right around there right get the resistance and then validate a break right so it's not going to be in the first shot i really doubt it. it and again just like meta we have to determine how how uh how strong that move can be based on sentiment right because we're looking at a catalyst that came out during the weekend okay so let's now pop on over to uh yeah, I, I would say that, guys. It, listen, just this. I'm going to give you the target to the downside, too, right? If this thing fails, the 186, which may actually be in the Tuesday, then price action here can lead to a pretty nice slide all the way down, right? So we're looking at, first of all, since we have around a $5.13 average true range on a daily basis, yeah, then I could see, I could see a bounce here at around that 182.60 level followed by a continuation to the downside this could uh yeah this could really come down man actually the main inflection points could be somewhere between 176 to about 173 jeez oh all right so 176 to 173 is potentially the uh the 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 overall downside right so this is not uh, looking too healthy at all uh it's yeah wow yeah this this thing is uh, potentially setting up a whole new chop here my goodness i don't think we i don't think we're gonna go back up that soon but uh you never know so heads up on the play team boeing uh catalyst to the downside and meta we have a catalyst for the downside play as well okay now uh remember that the immediate short term for the spy right we're looking at the daily time frame shooting star so that has a downside play more for a momentum play though so don't hold the downside bet 
Okay, if you're holding the downside bet for the spy, you're probably going to get trampled and uh, the, the bulls are going to take over. Okay, so if you see an opportunity for the downside in the immediate short term, take it. But but I would, you know what, just as a friend and as an entertainer to you, right? <laughs> keep uh, keep under consideration maybe an immediate close of the position. So same day open, same day close. Don't hold the position short because I do believe that the bulls are still in, in uh, control here. And we could lead a continuation to the upside in the following days. Okay, just first, we got a little pullback coming in on Monday or maybe Tuesday, right? Just uh, just know that that's uh, what I'm observing, okay? So, uh, yeah, so now we got the Catalyst plays, right? That's going to be Meta and uh, Boeing. Uh, let's take a look at uh, the request right here, right? So, C-E-L-H. Uh, Senor Pennington was actually nice enough to share this with us earlier uh in the stream right just around 20 minutes ago so let's take a look at this and see what it has in store for us let's pop that hood so daily time frame closing at 82.92 post hours 82.56 so slightly lower and i will say that this is getting dangerously dangerously close to its inflection point and that would be right here what that 82.43 would be that uh yeah, that, that's, a, that's a very dangerous area to kind of be in here, right? So, let's see. Man, not, a, yeah, this is not, this is not good. For whoever is holding bullish here, please, uh, uh, hey, Kit, good to see you. Happy Easter to you and happy Easter to everyone. Uh, so, I, I will say that CELH is approaching the inflection zone here. So, failing the 8249 could could have us enter a bear phase okay so let's pull up uh stochastic momentum daily time frame yeah we have a we have a downside pivot here we are in the bearish control zone and take a look at the dmi right so this is your this is your di minus your bears are starting to inch closer towards the di plus right so that could lead into a complete control of of the bears right so your first stop would naturally be around this area here, 79.36 to about 77.03. We have to be very careful when we approach that uh, that zone. All right, so guys, this is in interesting, right? So now I'm observing all these plays that have a short-term downside. I'm not sure that this is gonna be the end-all be-all for the play. Uh, that's just because there is still some relevant supports to look at, but so far, the spy downside for the immediate short term monday tuesday right we have uh the the, the boeing uh catalyst uh, for a downside play we have meta with a catalyst for a downside play so that's what i meant earlier by saying that the broader markets may agree with the meta with the meta short right with the elon with the elon musk uh tweet so it's probably going to support it for the initial for the initial drop but from there i do believe meta is going to run on its own steam and potentially continue to the downside while the markets repair. I, I think that there could be a break of correlation into into maybe Tuesday or Wednesday. I'm speaking meta versus spy. Okay, so, or meta versus big tech in, in general. Okay, so keep that in mind and uh, know that this uh, CELH ticker is also experiencing uh, uh, an immediate short-term downside, right? So let's pull up the four-hour time frame and see how, how uh, extensive this downside could be okay so there's already a corrective move on the four hour time frame so let's see the hourly does it have a uh okay yeah so this still has a downside in the hourly time frame please remember one thing your earlier time frames right your your hourly your 30 minute 15 minute iterations it depends on how strong that initial thrust is right so you got to think of physics here you got to think of that initial impact right how strong in the body of water is your first impact how strong is that impact and how likely is it to cascade into this into the later time frames right how how long will your waves uh, continue right so if your 15 minute time frame has a has a heavy impact then it'll likely lead as a cascading effect into the 30 30 leads into the hourly and so on Right. So if we are able to get a, a, a pretty drastic or a pretty strong initial impact then yeah, your hourly time frame here is likely to lead into the bi hourly three hour and then correct the four hour for a correction for a continuation to the downside. 
I will say that the four hour time frame is located in an area where there have already been some historical retracements. So that's something that we have to keep in mind too. The fact that we get uh, the fact that physics can play into this pretty nicely does not mean that the psychological aspect or the or the psychological component applied to trading can't take over. So that's something that we have to determine or adjust in our trading or our discretion, right? We have to uh, adjust our risk based on based on things like that. So we have to be we have to be really broad with the information that we can uh, observe here. So does it have uh, does it have the potential to drop some more? Sure. Does it look oversold? Absolutely. Please remember that indicators are just indicators though. These are lagging indicators. The only because we're oversold doesn't mean that it can't continue. We could continue overbuying or we could continue overselling forever, right? So that's this is just a, a general rule of thumb, right? It's just for us to determine where we typically tend to reverse or 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 uh or pivot. Right. So I do think that we still have some further downside here. And please know that this is a four hour time frame. So within the bounds of a 30 minute or an hourly or a bi hourly time frame, you have that two hours to adjust before the four hour can even react. Right. So that's, <laughs> you know, you still you still have that potential too. now observing here on the four hour time frame. It does look like we're uh, in the process of realizing a dead cat bounce. So let's take the measured move from that and uh see if we can find if we can't find a bottom uh, bottom target for that right so to play this dead cat bounce take a trend line from that bottom side right let's make this solid and uh my ocd is killing me right so let me just go ahead and make sure that it is uh, completely horizontal <laughs> and let's apply the trend line from the top of the dead cat to that bottom side right just like this you apply this trend line, the distance between the top side of the price action to that bottom side. You apply it right at the bottom of the wick, the first one, right? So this area would be where you apply that trend line to to observe this price objective. 81.72 is your price objective here. Okay, now if we were to identify this geometrically, let's go ahead and add a Fibonacci retracement from a swing low to a swing high of the week. So let's do that. There's no right or wrong within this strategy. It's just one of the ways that you can observe. So our target here that we're observing, 8172, we'll take a look at the correlation here between the two spots 618 at 8151. That's the golden mean to the 8172. So a very, very clean retracement target for us to observe, right? So psychology meets geometrics here pretty nicely. I would give this, uh, I, I would give this a higher probability move. I do think that this has a continuation to the downside. Now, please remember that this is your inflection point. So if we start failing, especially with a four hour close, especially with a four hour close here beneath that 82, uh, uh, this target here, that 82.43, this would be the least of your worries as a long trader, 81.51, right? We could see this range here. Please remember 79.42 to 76.91. Please use your discretion and always practice with proper risk management. Okay, team, so that is what we're looking for. The recovery is going to be something else. So we'll get to that if it does recover. All right, so good, good, good. Thank you, my brother, for taking a look at that. Let's go ahead and pull up ticker symbol TSLA for Tesla, right, and see what it has in store for us that this ticker has been kind of a, a, a wild uh, hoss, right? So let's uh, clear the drawings here since we are starting a new quarter, a new month, a new week, a new day. So let's go ahead and get rid of that stuff here and observe what price action has done over the last, I would say, uh, let's keep uh, in, let's keep into consideration here at least a few weeks. So very, very interesting regression here, right? You can almost draw a line through that. Let's just see how that's uh, how that behavior is kind of happening, right? Something like this, right? There is a very clean correlation to this downside here, and we're zigzagging our way down towards that. So. Uh, Senor Pennington, you're very welcome, my brother. Of course, of course. I am, I'm happy to look. I'm happy to help. And uh, I, I will say, man, you definitely have a find there. There is definitely uh, there is definitely a play for it. We just got to practice. Uh, uh, we just got to practice some, some uh, discretion within it. Uh, now, if this is the low for Tesla, then what could be a top side, right? So we're already observing here... Uh, Let's see. Let's pull this to the 12-hour time frame. 170, 175.79 is your daily close. 
175.05 is your post market close. And it looks like it's in the process of either invalidating this inverse head and shoulders or it's creating a double shoulder for it to uh, uh, continue on to the upside. Now, the fact that it can create one or two shoulders with a single head or a double head doesn't give it more potency. It doesn't it doesn't concentrate it anymore. It's still the same formation. It's still uh, just as valid as it ever will be. You know, it's just a. Uh, uh, aside from like a descending triangle, which has a hypotenuse, you know, that which has mathematical properties, the inverse head and shoulder and every other formation known to mankind is just a uh, psychologically backed formation. And that's it. That's it. Right. So. But that being said, this does have a higher probability, it has a bigger, it has a higher hit rate or a, or a better batting average than your typical formation. OK, so let's measure the move first. If this were the, uh, the the potential here, then let's find our neckline. Okay, so that's going to be your shoulder, head, and shoulder. Let's find that neckline. It could be very likely like this. Okay, so let's take into consideration the neckline to the bottom of the head as the price objective. Apply this to your right hand shoulder on top, and that would lead to a target of about two hundred dollars and seventy three cents. Okay. Now, if we do have a, play, a bull play in line, what's to stop the downside from continuing, right? Because if it was it was a very nice 12-hour closure, bearish engulfing, paired paired with uh, actually two other. This is a trifecta here, right? So you have your tweezer top bearish, bearish engulfing, met with a red outside bar, right? That and now it has a very nice continuation candle here. It hasn't returned anything. Look at this. This thing is a flat bottom, no wick at all. So that's pretty damn bearish for the moment. So in order to determine this, let's pull up the immediate short term time frames. Let's look at that four hour time frame with momentum and volatility. OK, so it looks like momentum is suggesting a pretty in, a pretty nice nosedive here. And your ADX, you're getting your D minus, right? This is or, or yeah, you, you, your bears are taking over here. They're crossing over uh, D, over DI plus DI minus is going up. So this may actually continue to the downside and invalidate this uh, this uh, short term bull play, which could be good for those bears that are already observing the markets or are currently holding risk to the downside in particular for Tesla. OK, so let's pull this on back. Let's go even more granular. Right. Let's go into the hourly time frame and see what momentum is looking like there. Now, it, this pivot here on the hourly time frame arguably looks corrective, right? It looks like it's already making its move towards the upside. I'm not going to say that this is just going to immediately reverse because, as you can see here, there have been times to where it drastically just uh, kind of pivots and V-shape recovers. I'm not going to say that because that's not uh, every situation. In fact, this could be it too, right? So where it continues to drop on a, on a more balanced scale so that, that you know, that could very well be the case here and if it is the case then where is the bottom side for this well in order to determine that let's go ahead and pull up our daily time frame actually you know what we'll pull up the 24 hour uh time frame and pull up the stats window here and see what we have as far as average true range right so let's just see how much this asset can move up and down throughout the uh throughout a, a, a day trade Right. So it looks like we have about almost uh, oh yeah, current time frame here. Twenty four. Yeah. Just about eight dollars and thirty six cents in average true range. Notice a 24 hour bearish. And is it a bearish engulfing? Oh, man, it definitely is. OK, <laughs> so, yeah, we have an outside red bar. Uh, very, very clean bottom side here. Penetrate. Yeah. Penetrating the prior bars low and a bearish engulfing so and not only that it's the fact that we've also created a high a lower high so this is uh this is <laughs> without with this wick kind of in the way this could have been your traditional hanging man uh candle formation which is a reversal formation right so very likely here this is to come down and uh let's see if we're observing here the eight dollars and 36 cents of the atr on a daily adjusted target this may change by tomorrow you're looking at a bottom side of about 172. So 172 could be located right about here. And that is a very important zone. And why is that? Well, that's because this is that target here. Take a look at that. 172.17. 
this area here marks off a pretty nice inflection that could add continuous pressure to the downside right so the target to be looked at or observed if we break below the 172.17 which may by the way be on tuesday we may not see this uh, realized tomorrow right because we have to still keep in mind that this trades a certain amount of dollars per day so if we are to see a continuation to the downside let's wait for the tuesday move and this would be the target to observe 167.63 okay and of course, if we start penetrating beneath uh, beneath this zone here, then the bottom side target would be your uh, 160.51. And notice that incrementally, we are dipping down seven to eight dollars, or around there, right? Where we're still using the the relative average true range. So we have to we have to keep it we have to keep those things in mind, okay, team? So overall, yeah, I do think that uh, Tesla sees a continuation to the downside here. It's going to zigzag, but please remember that that's naturally Tesla. Tesla does not tend to to, to show its uh its uh it it doesn't move it doesn't move so balanced. And I I've, I've actually made a, an exaggeration of this, right? So I can just show you here. Let's just say that you were going to enter a short here, right? That's going to be your uh whatever target this is right around 190 and you're looking for a bottom side target of around 165 so you're thinking to yourself okay huge catalyst right this thing is uh going down batteries are burning people are fleeing and and uh, everybody's trading into teslas nobody wants it right so so it's a big 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 catalyst all right so let's get short from this target here the problem with tesla is is that there's so much market fluctuation and it doesn't really follow the broader markets all that much it has a huge it has a huge i mean it, it the correlation between tesla and the spy is it couldn't be further away from correlated right so the problem here is that you'll get short there and you'll meet your target for sure but in that process you're gonna be doing this right and then bam you got it and in this process you were minus uh 300 percent of your account plus four thousand percent and then you got your target right so that's tesla for you another ticker that behaves like this is actually ticker symbol nflx for netflix right so netflix is quite is quite the wild hoss as well okay so what i will say is that if you are planning to play longer holds on tesla i would strongly advise against options contracts right options contracts tesla is a killer for those right it, it tends to uh it tends to invalidate it, it tends to invalidate and validate and invalidate and validate your move all within the same move right so you gotta be careful with this ticker all right so uh for my let's go ahead and take a look at uh, btc right let's look at what bitcoin is doing now because there's a lot of talk of uh, continuation to the upside and i will tell you that I am seeing a continuation to the upside for Bitcoin in general. We identified, wait, let me let me pull that back just to show you where we were, right? So we were here and I drew this chop to this point. We were talking about this on March 28th, right? So March 28th to today, March 31st, you can see that we're still within that chop zone. In order for us to break this chop, we're going to need a daily closure or a 12 hour closure above the above that uh the the uh resistance point 71,563 top side bottom side 69,484 now what i will say is this bitcoin tends to behave positively when it sets a new floor like this i can't say that about equities though i i very much could attest to Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies finding a nice floor when it consolidates like this. So the longer the consolidation phase, the better. But it tends to do that. Here's another consolidation phase. Pretty similar to what we're looking at here. Right? Nice consolidation phase here as well. And then we get the upside. So it tends to do that, right? Consolidates all like this and it gets an upside. Of course, we're going to deviate here and there, team. It's not perfect. But it tends to do that. It behaves very it behaves very positively when it become when it finds a new floor like this our current all-time high using bitcoin against the us dollar for i believe this is uh uh let's see what am i using 
forgot which one it is. My apologies on this. But yeah, it's big. It, oh, it's Binance. Oh, no, sorry. Yeah, it is Binance. Uh, Bitcoin against the US dollar in case you are curious. So your range your range is saying that your all time high is 73,808. I believe that this is in preparation of breaking that high in the next days. I do believe that Bitcoin. Ha <laughs> ha, my bro, Joe H. What is up, dude? Good to see you here, dude. Thank you so much for coming on. Bye, man. Dude, so uh, yeah, anyway, team, we uh, the measured move above this target would lead to about 75,125 with 24 cents at the 1 spot 618 golden mean. Okay, now I also want you to observe another potential because this is uh, leading towards a top side like you have no clue and, and it's a very i will not suggest for you to evaluate your price action the way i'm about to show you but if you take <laughs> if you take a trend line a regression from this pivot high to this pivot high here and you put it across then it takes you to an interesting target just like this right this is your regression here and let's move upward and now take a look at this. The crossing point is actually 86,829 Bitcoin. At where? Your golden mean, three spots, 618. So I got to tell you that, yeah, I am expecting, uh, let's see, what date are we in? Oh man, we're about to break into April. Damn, guys, I, I got it. I got to say. I got to say that. Yeah. Oh, Cyber Sultan, am I getting am I getting sound to you or no? Guys, please let me know if I'm actually getting sound over to the. Uh... Yeah, guys, are you hearing me speak? I'm going to go ahead and type it in here. Discord. Do you hear me? <laughs> The Archibald's trading team is over there. Not sure that one of the members can't. Okay, okay. All right, Cyber, it's probably just you, buddy. Reboot uh, reboot your thingy thing thing thing. All right. So, uh, yeah, team, approaching the Bitcoin halving and uh, also the fact that we're getting all these rhyming targets here. I, I do think, guys, please don't take this as financial advice, okay? Please don't. I'm just, I'm saying here that this month, we can potentially see an 86 to maybe 88. 80, uh, man. Okay, here's your bound. Okay, uh, 84,000 at the three spot 272, 84,681 to about 90,801 with a specific focus around the three spot 618 of 86,829 is what I'm expecting Bitcoin to be in within the month of April. Okay, so know for a fact that anything in the crypto markets can happen right this thing could uh, just capitulate here and then all of a sudden forty eight thousand dollars yay we lost all of it right so just uh, know that that is a potential here okay so now if we bring this up a you know into a higher time frame let me show you something interesting okay so i'm just uh gonna create a new chart here because who cares right let's pull this up to the uh three-day time frame and very similarly to the spy what do you see here right so that could be a bull flag and uh luckily for us there is a measured move so let's go ahead and take that into account here right so let's go ahead and bring that trend line from the top side to the very bottom side let me put this on log okay and now let's uh yeah let's go ahead and uh, put that into the uh, price objective here so go ahead and notice the target that's coming up, right? Let me just make sure that I am on the money there. There we go. Take a look at that. 89,677. And if that 89,677 truly is the target that we're going to, that would be the top bound that I just did to the four spot 236 in a very discretionary manner. Now we're observing geometrics and psychological price objectives meet there is confluence guys we have confluence okay so these targets uh 
uh, just please remember, right? Uh, I'm going to repeat it again. Don't take it as financial advice. I just see it as a higher probability move. Will I bet my children's college uh, tuition on it? Probably not, right? But, <laughs> but I will express to you what I'm seeing in the charts no matter what. And at the present moment, I have risk off on BTC. I don't own any BTC and I don't care that it goes up or down. It's just I'm seeing what the charts are seeing or saying. Okay, so uh, there you go. So, yeah, I'm potentially talking about another $10,000 jump. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, 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 I'm potentially talking about another $20,000 jump from where Bitcoin currently is over the next four weeks. Okay, so keep that keep that in mind. If you haven't heard it anywhere else, you probably hear it from me here. Okay. All right. So, uh, what else do we have? What is up? Uh, okay. Gotcha. I thought it was something else. Let me get rid of this real quick. Okay. So, just to recap, we have the Boeing play for a short term downside, or I don't know how freaking short term, right? The. We have the 727 uh, losing control and crashes during the landing in a terrifying incident catalyst, right? We also have the meta play, which is also for a downside here, based on the tweet that we saw from Elon Musk uh, talking about the uh, advertiser Sue Meta for allegedly inflating ad uh, viewership in the $7 billion lawsuit, right? So that's in play as well and we are also seeing a potential immediate short-term downside coming in from the spy based on the daily traders with a shooting star on top aside from that we did take a look at ticker symbol c e l h for a potential continuation to the downside based off a four hour dead cat bounce likely to drop from 8256 down into the zones of about 8150 to 8172 so that is currently your recap. We did look at Tesla as well. And Tesla may actually be experiencing a continuation to the downside. Focus targets for the week, 172.17 to 167.63. Heads up on that, right? And this may be a complete invalidation of the bull play. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and get rid of this here. And that and this <clears throat> so that we do know and we are all in the, on the same page. Okay. So uh, now let's go ahead and take a look at some other tickers here. Let me come back to the chat and see if we have any other questions here. Okay, we're looking good. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to ticker symbol MSFT, right? This is going to be Microsoft. Oh, right, right. Sorry, one more. Uh, uh, the IWM, this was the other bear play that we were observing here. Immediate short-term downside as well. And I think the downside here could last for maybe Monday into Tuesday. And we are observing these targets here, 210.07 to 209.19 before we can experience a bounce. Uh, we, ex we, uh, we were talking about the uh, potential of a head and shoulders formation here, right? But we have to make sure that we can, uh, you know, combat that 210.06 target being this resistance point. After we drop on there, the importance of getting above this target here and continuing is uh is pretty great okay or else this uh will be prepping a pretty uh massive downside continuation what i will say is that this has declining volume with declining price so that uh usually means uh weakness for the bears okay so that may not be the the case here and uh, we could see the iwm continue on to the upside okay so that is looking that's looking pretty good and aside from the iwm we just looked at your ticker symbol beat uh btc Right, so actually, you know what? We can go ahead and move on to ticker symbol DJT, which is the uh, the Trump Media and Technology Group. Now, this is presenting a pretty bearish play, but I don't think that the bear play here is as prominent as people may think. I do believe that the bear play may be temporary before this thing gets a continuation to the upside. So let's go ahead and observe the markets here for DJT because I do expect to bounce somewhere near in the near future before we can. Yeah, I think the I think a short term downside here before we get a continuation to the upside. We already have a new high printed on the asset, right? That's going to be your seventy nine thirty eight on a daily time frame. And uh, yeah, this four hour candle here in the post market doesn't look the best. OK, team, but. This uh, this presents a good opportunity. This presents a good opportunity because it may allow some some bears to come in. I'm sorry, some bulls to come in after the bears are done. 
And when the Bears cover, because I would strongly suggest for them to maybe kind of skedaddle here, right? They definitely shouldn't overstay overstay their welcome. They could uh, experience a severe trampling. DJT is presenting a, a very unique opportunity because the average true range on this is still very much expanded, meaning that volatility is still very present and it is still in in uh in the sentiment's eye okay so let's go ahead and gather those targets here for the potential bottom into a potential top but before we do that let me just go ahead and get a drink of water and find out if my son is awake i need to get him away from his nap give me three minutes team just a second i'll be right back We're back in action, team. Let's go ahead and get this thing rolling. DJT is the next ticker here. 
And uh, like I said, right, let's go ahead and get rid of the uh, the drawings here and start the uh, month off clean. Right. So, Leah, first of all, let's uh, take a look at the present position here regarding uh, regarding DJT in the five minute time frame. So I want to see. OK. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's uh, that speaks a lot of bearish action here just for now. Right, being below the EMA 200, the SMA 200, we have the EMA 20 here and the SMA 50, not even to mention the immediate short term moving averages being your SMA 5, EMA 5, and EMA 7 and 9. Sorry, those are completely below us, and it doesn't take much to identify this inflection zone here. So, because of that, let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, larger time frame and identify this, right? So that is a that is a very local inflection point right down here. I will say I will say that it it does present uh it does present a further downside if we break this especially with an hourly close beneath this uh beneath this uh support zone. So breaking 6030 can bring price action down to you know what let's not even uh use discretion let's use the stats here. So we have a post market close of 60 30 61 96 wow it's declining even in the post hours okay so yeah the low that we can experience here will use the 24 hour chart to determine right so we have an eight dollar and 14 cent average true range and please notice this very very heavy uh bearish engulfing on a 24 hour chart right so that's uh not looking the best here right so in fact just on that 24 hour huge bearish engulfing yet so this would be a continuation to the downside to the areas of about 58 28 so that is statistically speaking let's match that yeah let's match that with uh with a tangible target so that would be this trough right up here so we're going to use that in conjunction with the uh, 58 28 daily ATR right so just like this so we're gonna gather the pieces together and we're gonna determine where the higher probability low could be right so now that we have that let's come back into the daily or even the 12 hour chart and see if we can pull off oh you know what I, I think I could actually I'm gonna use yeah, I'm going to use this range. The yeah, I'm going to I'm going to use this swing high to this swing low with a fib. And I'm going to determine where this can pull back to, right? So we're already yeah, we're already resisting from the 1 spot 618. Let me take this a little tighter. I'm going to tighten up the range from just this high to this low here. Let's see. Wow. Well, take a look at that. The, your our discretionary target 5701, you're looking at a 5698 at the one spot 618 golden mean. Yeah, I would give this I would give this some pretty high validity here, okay team. So this is likely to drop into this zone in the coming day. And we do have a thrust enough to experience that downside. Um I I you know this can deviate it's not going to land perfectly at the 5698 I mean it happens sometimes right but know that you still have this lower wick here at uh at around uh 5648 and now what we have to do is identify that bounce how can we identify that as the uh as the floor or a potential local floor well first of all the 12 hour time frame is dropping into the into the gravitational zone this gravitational zone here is likely to bring price action down, which means that we have to look beyond a 12 hour. Let's go to the daily. Man, that is very low, and I certainly hope it's not the one, but okay, there it is. So it's your buy daily. We were talking about the potentials of facing a downside here over the next uh, maybe Monday or Tuesday. That buy daily time frame, which is going to be over tomorrow at market close, this could be facing this could be facing the SMA 14 and the gravitational zone for a bounce from that low before a continuation to the upside. And in a discretionary manner is how I'm pairing 
the SMA-14 with the Gravitation alongside the 1 spot 618. And that's that's kind of how I'm coming up to that, uh, to determining what that could be. Right? So now if I, you know, I don't even think I have a... Uh, let me see if we have anything up there as far as moving averages. Um, let's pull up your SMA-20. Man, the 10. Nothing that close. Let's see the EMA-7. Nope, nothing that close just yet. Okay. Let's look at the daily time frame. See if we have anything there. And do we have it on the 12? Okay. Let's see what the 12-hour has to say. Oh, well, naturally speaking, your EMA-9 pullback right at the 50%. Okay, yeah, so 12-hour time frame, EMA, EMA 9 concentrated at 57.63. Uh, and it's right in the zone that we're looking for, 58.28 to 57.01. And there is, a, there is a good likelihood that we can face a bounce from this area here. So what this is doing is that it's probably building a larger time frame bull flag, just like the one we saw on the SPY, and just like the one that we're seeing in uh, BTC, just like this. This is pretty much what I'm observing here for DJT. Let's, uh, did I have another chart for this somewhere else? Or was this it? Let me see the 12 hour. Yeah. So this is what the chart is looking like right now, right? And this is uh, BTC, something like this. We're somewhere over here. We'll get this downside and then reaccumulate. So uh, that is it for DJT. So heads up on that uh, bottom side targets one more time. 5701 to 5828 potential bounce from that area. They're using the buy daily time frame RSI as the uh, reason to bounce, right? So that, yeah, I, I knew I had this in a different, uh, in a, th there we go, this one here. That would be using your uh, buy daily time frame RSI for the bounce right here. And uh, overall, this thing is still suggesting an upside, though. This is a very powerful signal here. We're still suggesting an overall upside. I'm just talking about an immediate short-term time frame pullback before this thing continues. And who knows where this thing is going to go, right? Likely beyond the 79.38, but we just got to be prepared for those moves. Philly, Philly, what is up, my dude? Hi, uh, Joseph, what is up, my brother? It's it's sad how they're trying to destroy trying to destroy Boeing. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> Oh man, who's trying to destroy it? Aren't those uh, aren't those just mechanical issues that are happening like naturally, or or do you think somebody's? Are you saying that somebody's doing that to them? Like, as a is there a conspiracy? Joseph, speak to me. Philly, Philly, what's up, dude? So Boeing is a terrible investment uh, in my opinion, but uh, calls look solid. Bullish divergence on the MACD. Man, it's just that one catalyst, Philly Philly. The one I don't know if you saw that. Uh, where is it? This one. This came out yesterday. Saying uh Boeing 727 loses control and crashes during landing and terrifying incident. <laughs> Dude. Oh my goodness. You know, I'm not I'm not sure that I can I, I don't know what to do there, you know. I I don't know what to uh I don't know what to say. <laughs> but I feel like sentiment may actually want to take it who knows but uh just heads up on that right uh and and yeah please remember team that meta also has a similar a similar situation going in within that and uh aside from aside from these plays what do we have that's still continuing to the upside oh right carvana <laughs> carvana just continues to print newer highs after newer highs after newer highs damn i gotta say you guys this is really impressive right so this was that <laughs> inverted head and shoulders that we were looking at print since august of 2023 <laughs> right so let's go ahead and get that regression here because that's probably going to give us the macro target for this uh for this boy right something like this right would be your regression so <laughs> Let's see. Let's see where this thing can go. I got to say, man, Pennington called this one out like years ago. <laughs> he came to the Arca Bulls training team in September of 1986 and said, guys, in 2024, Carvana is going to launch. Let's go. <laughs> so this thing, let's see. The measured move for the upside is still kind of ridiculous. 
Right, so this is speaking a 133.79 top side for ticker symbol CVNA, and man, the used cars, the, the the used cars, man, they're doing it right. Everything. If there's ever a time to get rid of some of the used cars that you may have, it could be around now, right? Or just wait for that little bit of a continuation to the upside. But you'll probably get top dollar for these used cars, and you know what? Oh my goodness. I just realized that. I just realized that even potentially getting into a freaking car accident, right? Do not do that. Okay. And then what happens uh, when happens when they evaluate your car as a total loss? What do they have to give you? The fair value at the at the whatever? That fair value is inflated at the at this moment. <laughs> Man, so everybody's making it making it out, right? Getting away with murder is really what it is. Right, guys, please do not commit any fraud out there. Please be careful. All right. Use proper risk management. Pennington is saying that maybe PayPal is next for the upside. Is there a catalyst? I You're not the first to say that. You're not the first to mention PayPal. And I'm wondering that that's actually sparking a curiosity to me. So let me let me give this a quick little uh, uh, swing high to swing low fib retracement. Okay, well, that's awesome. <laughs> so... <laughs> That's your that's your zone, right? That's absolutely your zone. Like always, man. Every time I show this to my master students, they're like, "What?" Which, by the way, team, uh, that that does remind me, right? Let's let's just go ahead and put it out here for. I know my my master students are gonna receive their notification tomorrow, and they do have some priority over over the general public. But please reach out to me at arcmasterscourse at gmail for the this is going to be the 8 to 12 week mentorship program for for, for trading strategies okay at gmail okay so let's go ahead and do that guys sorry i i think i heard my son just blast the door open and closed it like crazy he's like oh he's at work <laughs> so definitely get in touch with me at arcmasterscourse at gmail.com for the strategies 8 to 12 week mentorship program i'll get you the uh, disclaimer i'll get you the uh, syllabus and all that good stuff but yeah, tomorrow, uh, track four students will receive their notification for the continuation to the strategies, which, by the way, I already have a bunch of people signing up. So please be patient with me. You will be receiving your master badges and you will be receiving the link to the ARC uh, University if you haven't done so already. Philly Philly seeing Daddy Arca. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, team. So that is going to do it here. For, for ticker symbol CVNA, I, I guys, if this is going to experience a little bit of a pullback, wait for it, right? This thing could pull back to around the areas of about $82, $83. There is inflection to be found at about, uh, you know what, if I can keep it at the lowest point, I would say $82 at the lowest point. But heads up on this bottom side here of about $83.54. And I do think that that kind of speaks on the stats as well. Uh, in fact, $84.81. Okay, there you go. So 8481 to 8239 could be an area of interest, right? So let's just kind of plot it there. 82, 80, 8239 to 8481, just like this here. It's very sensitive. My apologies. There we go. So that could be your immediate short-term time frame pullback, potential loading zone for a continuation to the upside. This does appear to be a type of pennant breakout, right? So the measured move is already that already this is what i mean man guys this is what i mean by meet me into strategies in the mentorship program because then i won't have to do this right so hi <laughs> okay so this is what i'm seeing okay this is your breakout from the pennant okay this is your first measured move here center of the triangle target the target that you're observing here is actually from the top side to the bottom side of the pennant, put it at the breakout candle, and you were observing here this top side. You were looking at a 9188. You got FOMO here all the way up to this target. But, but I mean, look at this candle perfectly to the take profit target, right? So, so that you don't have to do these little silly lines and formations, you can just see why this target was met. Right, that's what that's what I mean. Join me in strategies, and you'll be able to identify uh, formations. You'll be able to identify psychological targets like that, Fibonacci retracements, uh, moving averages, indicator types, all kinds. 
All right, team. So, uh, yeah, I think that this has a, a pullback to realize here, likely into that 82.39 to the 84.83 before a continuation to the upside. If we were to continue to the upside, I will say that there is a good connection between the upper bound of the two standard deviation multiplier away from your 82.59 mean to land right at about 101.35. And that has, you know, I'm going to plot it out here because your 2 spot 618 has a 102.78. So that naturally, you know, I'm going there, right? I'm, I got to put myself there. So 101.35, just about like this here to that 2 spot 618 at about 102.78 okay so that's currently what i'm observing here as the next potential high for carvana in the coming days remember that this has a five dollar 64 cent average true range so you know that means that at the opening we could experience a downside right so if we're talking about an 88 or 87.91 and five dollars minus that you know yeah that's pretty much there at 82.39 that's it. it's all rhyming pretty nicely okay team so that's very good now uh all right so we have covered uh, let's look at microsoft let's look at uh, microsoft to see what it's doing too right because this just like the broader markets immediate short-term time frame pullback let's get uh, we already met the targets that we were looking for right in fact we came very short of the target we were talking about a 431.33 price action unfortunately reached a high of 430.82 so drop the ball like crazy here right my apologies <laughs> So now let's uh, let's go ahead and get rid of these drawings just like we have on the uh, rest of the uh, the plays, right? And see where we're currently standing. Five minute time frame below the below every major moving average here, right? You have the EMA nine, EMA seven, SMA five, EMA twenty, your SMA fifty, SMA one hundred, two hundred, and your EMA two hundred all above the price action here and headed towards a continuation on that downside. Now for the daily time frame. Let's see what we have as far as inflection or an area of, uh, of a key support, right? In fact, this is a, this is a very interesting support. That's where we're sitting right now. In fact, uh, let's see. So 42072 was your Friday close. 41986 penetrating the, the yeah. Okay, good. This, this is likely coming down to this inflection. So 41909 is the line in the sand here. Okay, so failing this would lead to a downside and that that downside is highly likely going to be right about here the 417 21 okay so failure of this let's go ahead and just mark this off red would likely lead you to the support bottom of around 417 91 uh and that may be a temporary support before it bounces and validates the resistance of your 41909 before a continuation to the downside of which then could put price action right about here ish right so right around 41584 it is a range let me let me draw it in 41584 and where is that low let's find it all i'm looking for team is the amount of contact points that i have between all of these candles uh in the way here i just want to see which ones touch the most i would say it's about here All right we have the support bottom here we have the opening basis of this wick high on this area here wick low on this area here wick low there and that's what i'm observing here so i think the absolute bottom may be 4 1488 to 4 15 84 let's take a look at the let's take a look at the stats and see if uh they agree with that right so in fact, they do. So go ahead and take a look at your daily ATR low at 414.45. We're looking at 414.88 with discretion with only the naked eye, right? So that is already in line with our psychology. Okay, so if we are to get that downside, this is suggesting a potential downside to be figured all in one day, which, by the way, still lands with our thesis that we're experiencing with the SPY. Right, so we're looking at the SPY daily, huge shooting star candle, potential downside continuation over the next uh, maybe day. Uh, I would say maybe Tuesday into uh, maybe Wednesday. No, I would say Monday into Tuesday. I don't think I would give it beyond uh, beyond Tuesday. I, I, I really do believe that the markets are going to start continuing to the upside based on a, a two a, a two day consolidation, and that's just that that probably is just about it.
right? <laughs> LPB, how dare you come up with me with these diggers here? You know, but you know that I'm not even going to search that. <laughs> What is up, my bro? Happy Easter to you, man, and happy Easter to your family. I hope you guys are well. I hope you have spent a good weekend, and it's very good to see you here, my brother. But, uh, yeah, team, so experience to the experiences to the downside could be limited to around two days. Do not overstay your welcome. Do not act like a bear for this entire time. The bear's hodling or hodling, whatever, however you say that. Diamond handing the downside is very much against the grain okay so you could be trampled out of the way into this okay so i need you to be very careful practicing in the markets here because we could experience a massive continuation to the upside after a little bit of consolidation this is a big massive repositioning here team okay so every the institutions are going to come back here they're going to long what they want they're going to they're just going to reposition okay so and i don't want you to be in the way of that all right so in other words what i'm noticing here is that Microsoft is establishing a new floor, okay? And that floor can be seen simply like, like this. Let me see, do I have only two here? I think this is, uh, okay. Great, so this is what I'm observing here. This is your chop one. And it's a possibility that we're now establishing the new chop zone right above that, right? So this is going to be your uh, this is going to be your lower bound, and this is going to be the new bound here. Okay, so th th this is just a, a a typical type of uh, play. The upside is not done. We may get one of these here, a fake a fake out, right? A look above, and then a continuation into consolidation. Uh, which can introduce the new high in, 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 the, in the spy that I'm speaking of, right? So if that's the case, then we can identify that topside target by simply taking the width in the measurement here, right? So this is going to be likely that top side, right about here. 436.88 could be that uh, maybe Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we could see that top side before it kind of uh, comes back down and, and consolidates again. Something just similar to this. Right. So if that's the case, then I, I think that we're establishing a bullish formation before continuing on to another leg. Oh, my goodness, man. It, it's uh, the the uh, the downside is just not coming in. I don't guys, I'm not I don't see it in the broader markets. I just simply do not see a continuation to the downside. And if and if that's the case, then so be it. Right. Let it be the case that where we have the markets continuing However hard we have to grind, let it happen. It's just uh, we go, we, we can't go against the grain, right? If you start swimming against the uh, the flow, then you're gonna experience a lot of trouble, right? So how about beyond? Uh, happy, uh, <laughs> happy R e Easter, Arca, eat skeet. <laughs> now for real, for real though, B Y N D. Of course, yeah, I can look at that for you, my brother. Not a problem. Philly Philly saying, yeah, I will probably play puts tomorrow with that uh, inverted hammer on the daily. Uh, been an easy play, but almost every single time Spy dropped, it shot up just as fast and even faster. <laughs> uh, and, and you know what? It was a really choppy week uh, with the Spy. So when there is chop like this and you have very little, uh, you have a very tight range, that you that really just tells you that it's a scalper's realm you know it, it really just tells you that uh we would benefit better from taking advantage of the of the very short moves so a, a lot of the times you know that's uh that can mean that you you would apply uh probably lesser risk you know so definitely don't go in with your a plus you know portfolio entry <laughs> you know so as as far as as far as trading is concerned on a daily basis maybe maybe just scalps right uh could be could be the answer until we really uh determine a, a stronger a stronger trend i i don't know when that can happen but that so far this uh quarterly uh the the quarterly candle on the spy that's that's freaking powerful you know look at this thing that's uh that's 
that is not giving over that is not bearish <laughs> you know? oh philly philly my brother so uh say philly philly saying we are in a stock pickers market uh my uh, right now in my opinion he's saying you've been money though arca my brother thank you so much dude i really appreciate that i i i, I truly hope that i can present uh uh, usable information right for the trading and, and i and i appreciate you philly philly i know that you're uh you you speak to me like a like a knowledgeable trader you speak to me like you know what you're talking about and i believe it right and i and i do believe it so that just means that you know so, uh, that i have to up my game and i have to make sure that uh that the uh, team and uh, whoever i'm speaking to are receiving viable information and usable information more so right but having having people like you say that man that's literally fuel to the fire my brother thank you so much i appreciate you greatly uh it's giving nummy vibes <laughs> nice so yeah why don't we run into that ticker B uh, bynd for lpb let's take a look so that's gonna be uh beyond meat right this, i remember this ticker man i remember that this went freaking off the hinges here right huge upside to that uh 1550 and uh lpb are we looking at any potentials uh <laughs> philly philly you're just a knowledgeable gambler i think all of us would be my friend i would agree with that completely with you all right so uh lpb do we have any type of catalysts or or are we identifying something that could be uh in play for beyond i can i i can potentially see ish right if i can uh maybe uh pop open uh, volatility and linear and versus momentum so we can see the you know what i could actually i'm gonna i you know for those of you have who have seen my videos then you've already been introduced to the to the art to the abt volatility heat map right but this is this is pretty much the way that i'm that i'm uh it's almost done right so this is the this is what I'm going to be using next. I just, I just have to have it open up in a certain way. <sighs> Let's see. I have to observe this diff uh, differently. And this one here would be the histogram with this being the, uh, where, where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Here we go. Okay. Let's diminish this to the lowest one. Here we go. Okay. So let's see. Heavy, heavy contraction is what we're experiencing here for now. Hmm. Let me pull up stochastic momentum as well. All right. So this is, uh, these are the stokes here. And I can actually just add them in there. Let me get rid of, uh, let me get rid of the other one too. I want to see everything in one indicator. That's uh, that's the idea here. So hopefully I can get this thing to be programmed all the way in. Okay. And let me put this on top. All right. So let's take a look at this. We have a downside suggesting on the four hour time frame. Contraction is. Oh, okay. So is the daily contracting too? Oh, man. That's a very interesting upside with huge contraction. Let me see the 12 hour. If, if it wasn't for so much contraction, I mean, this is a potential setup here. This, I mean, historically speaking, the contraction phase being beneath the 15% with an upside pivot means that this is getting ready for purchase it could be getting like here look at this this was critical contraction here and then when we started expanding we we started reverting from a similar area here right stochastic momentum pivoted and this thing rocket shipped so the last iteration well this was a contraction for a downside let's see here here's another one right then this is very much like where we are now this had heavy contraction pretty much where we are now. This is actually a little bit lower. And as soon as we actually, yeah, this thing started expanding and we had a massive upside there too. So there are iterations here to where this has experienced an expansion move towards the upside. 
from a from a from a critical contractive uh, phase. The thing is, I can't tell you how fast it's gonna be. I, I don't know when that's gonna happen, but it is. It is in essence getting ready, and stochastic momentum is entering the bullish control zone. So I would keep an eye on volatility here. As soon as volatility starts peaking its head, maybe even I actually, you know what? There could even be a back test here of uh, of putting the uh, uh, yeah, uh, adjusting this to maybe the ten percent. This zone here. As soon as we get a break upside. Moving average and volatility component above this 10%, that could be a massive fired signal for a continuation to the upside and one that could probably lead into the $11 to $12 target, maybe even up to this gap here of $13.39. I see it in the cards. It's just, it's really slow at the moment. And price action tends to drop when there's this heavy contraction. That contraction means that there is a lack of interest. So, uh, no short interest, right? No sell pressure and no buy side pressure either. So when there is a massive, when there is this massive, uh, contraction phase like this, that usually just price action just naturally starts to drop, right? Notice this, right? All this contraction here and look at what, look at what price action did. So when there is no, that this is literally the, the, uh, the rate of uh, the rate of exchange, right? The, your your uh, the disbursement of returns, right? So all of this it just minimizes to a, to a nothing, and price action algorithmically will drop into a value to where it to where then the sentiment will start introducing a buy side pressure or a sell side. Who knows? But that's that's really how this thing kind of works, right? And and we're within that contraction phase right now. And we're, the cool thing is that we have an upside pivot on Stokes reaching uh, reaching the uh, the bullish control zone. So, in my opinion, maybe so. Maybe this thing is getting ready for a push to the upside. The last thing that you want, though, I will say this: if it continues to consolidate like this, this can still continue upward. Right, because it's not losing value. It's still it's maintaining its up. So if that happens, and this is down here getting ready to expand, then then you're looking at this uh, as an adjusted move. Let me fix it up. Let me make this a solid line, and let me just go ahead and color it a really bright color. So then you would be looking at this potential here instead of the upside continuation. If this consolidates up here, while your daily is reading an upside, this could still continue an upside while we maintain the upside and volatility could still contract. If volatility then starts to expand beyond that 10% or 15% with an overbought percentile here on Stochastic, then your real destination would actually be for a continuation to the downside. And that's not something that you're that that you want here, right? Because that would suggest a break of this inflection of 741, and that would introduce your bottom your bottom pivots here of about uh, 624 to around 596. So heads up with that, okay? So keep an eye on stochastic momentum, keep an eye on your volatility index, and see if this thing really, uh, you know, if it sets up if it sets up either way. It's just there's no trend at the moment, there's no interest either side. We had this thing has to determine what is going to do. So a catalyst would be incredible. You know, something uh, right three days ago, Beyond Meat launching, uh, launching a new line of Beyond Crumbles shares rise. OK, great. That That's uh, it's probably getting fed from that catalyst three days ago. That was just on what Thursday or Friday. That's good. All right. So maybe maybe this uh, maybe that. Uh, Maybe that buy side pressure can continue here, but really this needs to change it. It needs to get a, a huge shift. And if it doesn't get it, then now you know the outcome, my brother. But I'm I, I'm happy you asked me about it, right? Because this is a little bit complex. It could add some intricacies into the play, but I, I still believe that there could be... I'm, I'm going to be honest here. I, I'm favoring the bulls, okay? I'm favoring the bulls because, number one, this is experiencing a bullish breakout from our current position. Now, how can I tell that that's happening? Well, usually at the bottom of a trend, you tend to uh, 
build a thing called a falling wedge, right? And I can see the triangle there. I can see the breakout already happening too. This is this is literally the this is literally the play right here. Right? So this is in the this is in that process. In fact, this is probably an 8-hour time frame maybe. Yeah. Right? You have your uh declining price here, right? You have your uh let me see. Yep, you also had your declining volume perfectly with the signature of the triangle, right? Your your targets, uh, probably something like this, right? This is going to be your upper bound targets to observe. This is your clean break here. So top side targets could be at about 896, top side of the price action here on the swing high, bi-weekly high. And uh, your other bounds have already been met. So now the one that's left is this top side target. Okay, so it's practicing psychological reversal moves okay and if you would like a further upside target well there is one more that we can observe this was actually a this was actually a bullish buy formation breakout right it's not known and it's not keyed in to the trading it's actually my own strategy and it's something that i've noticed over time myself right so this would be your just about like this that would be your inverse head and shoulders formation it gives you a slightly different target except that this one may give you a further extension use the top side of your shoulder and your top side target is right at our discretion bam at 940 to about 945. okay so those would be your upper bounds now how can we see if that's even possible well uh your top side target here of about 894 is in line here with your uh current atr top 890 at the eight hour time frame 894 your psychological target now your upside bounds here to 940 uh maybe we got to look at your 24 hour time frame to see if we have anything to kind of uh meet that right so uh 893 at the current nine uh maybe yeah, yeah they're like i guess so right between your upper one standard deviation multiplier and your upper two standard deviation multiplier that's your 910 to 992 so that's your focus right in here 940 to 947. so that means that this would be about a two or three day effort given that it does present a continuation to the upside based on what i mentioned right the the buy side interest we it just needs buyers but it's set up for a continuation to the upside but uh, yeah, look out for your stochastic momentum. Don't, like if you start if you start to see this here while you're consolidating in the same place, that's uh, that's risk off. Okay, risk, risk, risk off. Alex, what's up? Hi, Arga. Good evening. Hope you are well and had a nice Easter. We definitely did. Thank you so much, and I wish the same for you. Austin, what is up, buddy? How's it going, man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't we why don't we do that for you? Let's go ahead and take a look. And that is it for ticker symbol B Y N D L P B. I hope that information helped you out, my brother. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a look at B C A N. Right. Wonder why this play is all is being spoken about. It's the, one of those plays that I've actually talked about. I mean, I I think I talked about this play year no, no months and months and months ago. All right. So let me just go ahead and shift uh, volatility here. And uh, putting my stochastic momentum back in this area here. Okay. This is really interesting. Let me see the daily time frame of BCAN. See what it's doing. Uh, wow. Okay. Is there a... Oh, this recently split. 1 to 190. Holy goodness. Okay. So that is a... That is a... That's a large difference. <laughs> you lusty savant. <laughs> LPB, I am a fan of your reward choice, my friend. <laughs> oh, dude. So Austin saying, not necessarily asking you to pull it up. Yeah, you can if you want. No, no, no. I got you, buddy. I got you. I got you, man. Um, I'm, I'm saying this because I'm literally around seven minutes, eight minutes uh, to close. But uh, this somebody asked me about this last week, too. And uh, it's interesting because it is, it's showing strength, but from my perspective, just heads up because this is increasing strength towards the downside. So when you have this volume increasing to the upside and you have downside, that's bare strength. 
Now, inversely, if this were pivoted towards the upside, if price were pivoted towards the upside, and you had increasing volume, that's the inverse, right? That would be bull strength. So, unless you know something uh, that's uh, bound to come in, that I don't, right? That it could be a catalyst of sorts because it is, in a sense, consolidating now. Let me look at the four hour time frame and let me observe a moment. Uh, it's still kind of flatlined. Let me see. Okay, the hourly time frame is presenting a bull case. Very slight, though. Very slight. Uh, let's see this in the 15 minute. Yikes. Okay. So immediate short-term downside here. Expect a bounce from the areas of about 131. Tomorrow, you retrace. Uh, actually, I'll, I'll adjust that as a zone. 133 to 131. You pull back into this area here in the hourly time frame, and you bounce to the upside. Let me see how we can figure that. That would be your three hour or your bi hourly. Yeah, your three hour. Okay, three hour time frame bounces from the SMA 14 here, which naturally would match your 131 low. The, the problem here is that if we are dipping on a three hour time frame, then that gives you more space. So then there is another lower target to observe, right? And that would naturally be your 120. To this wick low of about 125 right in here so if, if that's the case my brother i do think that uh you know that what what could lead into this uh, play would honestly be some very obvious signals let me show you yeah do we have an opening here though let me see what the opening is 144 and a close of one okay no th these are these are it's still bearish because it closed beneath the prior the prior bar open, right? So that open was at 140. This is at 139, suggesting a continuation. It's the red inside bar, but you still have a bar down here on the red bar. So red wicks get taken out. So you gotta you gotta be careful here, man. I do think that uh, immediate short term time frame we're dipping here to 130, 133 based on an hourly retracement. The stats are showing you the same thing. Hourly retracement to 132. And that is a, that is definitely a red outside bar with a shooting star. So this is a bearish buy formation. Yeah, very likely downside there. So I, I do think that the three hour may be the, the kind of the showstopper here based on the RSI retracement. I will say that this thing is just kind of hovering though. That sucks, right? So wait, wait for it because you may actually see this target one more time. Maybe, maybe, maybe. 120 to 125. Heads up, buddy. Uh, man. Yeah, guys, be careful with this one because it's not a. It may not. It may not be done. You don't want to get fooled here. Because uh, the last thing that you want to experience is a dead cat bounce. Yeah, and that would be uh, you know, literally finding your your bottom side here. You get the curvature up here. You face the bottom side one more time. And that would be the break of inflection. So, in other words, if that is the play, then the downside target to really look out for here is, is uh, certainly lower. Right? If, if the dead cat happens, right? Breaking this bottom side of 120 with, I would say, anything as maybe even a 15-minute candle closure beneath that can do it. I can lead price action to an 81 cent bottom heads up. Okay. And is it the, can I, can I back it? Right. Can I back it with maybe, well, damn, I, I, I could, geez, that your two fib is landing right at 81, 81. So that's, and yeah, guys, damn, you gotta be very, you gotta be very careful here. That's confluent. Uh, it, it, it is uh, confluent to a geometrics here too. Psycho, psych, Psychology and geometrics are leading towards that downside there. But I, again, the three hour time frame is suggesting a bounce from this area here. That bounce, you know, could turn into an inverted cup and then this target will still be imminent. So be careful. And Joseph saying, bro, how the hell can you watch a candle and then predict the price movement? <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> 
dude, the candle says so much, um, which is honestly, that's the primary thing that we focus on, right? In, in the, uh, in the master's course and the, uh, the mentorship program, it's, it's raw price action. And that's, uh, it, it is, it is key. It is, it is, uh, it is absolutely key. And, um, uh, one reason that you would actually experience a downside right now, team, is also because of this, right? Geometrically speaking, you're within the golden pocket. That's going to be your not 618 to the not 382 Fibonacci ratio. So right within here, that's going to be an impulse for a downside. Again, the three-hour time frame is suggesting this downside here, though, this target. Just remember, if we fail this, then risk off or short risk on. Um, But yeah, yeah, j just... Uh, just be careful is really what I'm saying. Oh my goodness, man. But yeah, you guys, I think uh, I think we have uh, reached our maximum end here. Please remember, team, reach out to me at arcmasterscourse at gmail.com to get yourself into the, uh, into the Continuation Strategies Mentorship Program. This is not the Arc Masters course. It's actually the continuation of it based on request. Okay, so reach out to me at arcmasterscourse at gmail to get yourself into the strategies uh, studies, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, masters, uh, and then we'll put a capital C here so it doesn't confuse anybody. All right, team, very much appreciate everybody for coming on out. Send me the email. I'll give you the disclaimer and the syllabus based on this uh, mentorship program, and we'll get you rolling, right? Uh, in Philly, Philly, oh, yeah. Definitely. Lots of hours. <laughs> lots of hours. I think I'm approaching around 7,000 hours now, man. I've, I haven't been trading for too long. It's only been two and a half years, really. Right? But uh, I found a huge love for it, man. <laughs> I, I absolutely loved it. But yeah, you guys, thank you so much for coming on. Bye, Austin. You're very welcome, my bro. And Joseph, good to see you. Aiden, what's up, buddy? But guys, if any questions, you know where to reach out to me. I wish you a very safe night. And please remember, join the Archibald's trading team if you would like to trade alongside myself and some very talented traders too. I appreciate everybody for coming on out. Have a very good night and a good rest of your, uh, your Easter holiday. All right, team? <laughs> so here's that massive exit, right? Literally, guys, they can't hear that. <laughs> please take whatever I do show and iterate within these videos as just a form of entertainment as I cannot suggest for you to buy, sell, or hold any assets whatsoever. I need you to do your own due diligence and everything will be cool, cool. But with that said, team, I wish you well. A very, very good rest of your night in Easter. And I will catch you at the Bell Manana. Adios, team.